Today, the anaconda is believed to be one of the biggest snakes in the world. They owe this to their sheer size and the capability to swallow things whole. Sometimes they've been known to swallow even a goat or a deer whole. But have you heard of the snake christened Titanoboa? This ferocious giant was found in the period of dinosaurs and was infinitely bigger than the anaconda or any other reptile that's in existence today. It is to this day thought to be the biggest snake ever existing on Earth, aptly earning the name Monster Snake. Titanoboa, discovered by museum scientists, was the largest snake that ever lived. Estimated to be up to 50 feet long and 3 feet wide, this snake was the top predator in the world's first tropical rainforests. It was also the largest known predator on the planet between the extinction of dinosaurs 65 million years ago and the first appearance of the Megalodon about 23 million years ago. Titanoboa surjonesis is the world's largest snake as far as we know. Scientists estimate that it could have weighed over a ton. With all these dimensions in mind, most of us would find it quite difficult to imagine what this would mean in terms of size. Therefore, one of the ways we could imagine it would be dwelling on the fact that if it were to try to come in through your office door, then it would have to seriously squeeze itself to get to you. Hopefully that paints a slightly better picture of the Titanoboa. It was a truly gigantic creature. As mentioned, since the extinction of the dinosaurs, the Titanoboa ranks as the largest land predator that we know of on the face of the planet. Titanoboa was so huge, it stretched the limits of what we thought was possible in terms of being able to survive on land while remaining in sync with the laws of physics. Every living being has only been able to evolve under the restraints of gravity, but it seems with the Titanoboa, evolution broke the literal laws of the universe and produced the biggest belly crawler ever, only because gravity doesn't affect giants as much in the sea. Fossils of Titanoboa were found in a coal mine in northern Colombia, in tropical South America. The age of the rocks that they were found in is about 58 million years old. What was really exciting about the coal mine initially was that it preserved the ancient remnants of a rainforest. This had to be the oldest evidence for a rainforest that we've ever had from South America. As scientists move around the area, they started spotting bones of animals. It was an exciting experience. I mean, it felt like they were literally opening a window into the past. They were traveling backwards, still in tropical South America, but a few million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs, and trying to figure out what these creatures looked like. While exploring the scenery, one of the things they found was this humongous snake. The first question they asked themselves was, why don't we have such large snakes in the rainforests of South America today? This specific snake seems to be related to boas and anacondas. Hence, another question would be, why don't they get bigger than they currently do? We assume the answer to that question could be attributed to South America being much hotter about 58 million years ago. This is very important for species like Titanoboa because, as cold-blooded vertebrates, they gain their body temperature from the temperature of the environment in which they're in. This is different from warm-blooded animals who derive their temperature from the foods they eat. As a result, cold-blooded reptiles are unable to get beyond a certain temperature without their metabolism slowing so far down that they may fail to, for example, have the ability to eat at a certain temperature. Given the temperatures at the equator, there lives the largest snakes today, and they're able to grow as large as they possibly can. Scientists say that the one thing that would give us the ability to build a larger snake would be relaxing those temperatures. Those temperatures would then become warmer. Therefore, they think that Titanoboa could grow as large as it did because the temperatures could have even been as high as 10 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than they are today. So what if Titanoboa didn't go extinct. Titanoboa as a pet? Well, the word pet has already stretched so far and has been adapted for pythons and anacondas. There's a number of people who keep those species, with some snakes being in the 20-foot range. Some of these large snakes are indeed tame enough to be handled and possibly used in educational contexts. However, others could be waiting for any opportunity to bite your face. With that in mind, I think we could agree that it would be more appropriate to refer to them as captives instead of pets. 
With the Titan Naboa, I believe there are people who would be able to maintain the beast in captivity. This would probably be done as a zoo animal is restricted. One would require a pretty huge enclosure, maybe even as big as an entire house. In addition to this, its food would definitely be expensive. Species of this size that have such needs would most likely be kept by institutions as opposed to private collectors. The Titan Naboa was, in simple terms, too large to be handled, and consequently, they could kill a human by accident just as easy as on purpose. Titan Naboa and Other Animals Crocodiles are known to be very fearsome predators. However, it's scientifically proven that even such creatures could be preyed upon by Titan Naboas. The likes of the Titan Naboa would not think twice about attacking and feeding on crocodiles. Incidences of such happenings with current snakes have been witnessed and caught on camera, either in videos or photographs of snakes like the anaconda. This would in turn suggest that it seems highly possible that the Titan Naboa, which is bigger, would definitely have been attacking and consuming animals as large and threatening as crocodiles. I guess if the Titan Naboa did exist, then crocodiles would be the ones going extinct. Titan Naboa and Global Warming With the scientists' findings, most people ask themselves, does this mean that with future global warming, we'll have larger snakes appearing on the surface of Earth? The theoretical answer would be yes. We just might be getting larger snakes on our planet as a result of global warming. However, according to the same scientists, while this may be true in theory, the fact is we may probably not see such snakes. This is because in order for such a large snake to be built from a species like an anaconda, there has to be a conducive habitat for it. Such an environment seems to be disappearing in most parts of our planet. This is more prevalent in the more biodiverse areas in the tropics, which would have been its ideal habitat. Additionally, interaction with human beings may prevent these very large species of snakes from resurfacing, and the so-called global warming that we're anticipating will take place in the next about 200 years, seemingly happening way faster than the increase towards a warmer climate that was happening in the past. The slower change in the past is probably what aided the growth, and eventually, very large body sizes seen in Titan Naboas about 58 million years ago. Inspiration for Movies Since its discovery in 2009, Titan Naboa has gained a lot of attention, and rightfully so. It even has its own documentary, putting it in the leagues of Godzilla and King Kong. Except this beast is anything but fictional, at least its enormous fossils would say otherwise. The documentary shown on the Smithsonian Channel took an in-depth look into how the colossal reptile looked like, how it survived, and how its surroundings would have appeared back in the day. As if this TV show was not enough, it even had its own dedicated article in the Smithsonian Magazine. And in another documentary about the animal, the Titan Naboa is estimated to overwhelm or overpower even a Tyrannosaurus Rex. On top of this, the massive snake has its own life-size figurine in a display at the Smithsonian Museum. Now this gigantic guy is no stranger to celebrities. The Titan Noboa was also part of the show Primeval New World, where it laid waste to a group of scientists on a boat and almost slew many others. Most famously, it appeared in the blockbuster movie Jurassic Park, Builder as a golden creature in the Glacier Park. This might have been an incorrect depiction, however, since the snake being a cold-blooded animal would mean that it would only live in the tropical jungle. In the movie, it also looks like it has teeth that resembles those of a rattlesnake, although the recovered fossils would suggest otherwise. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take 5 seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. The reptile slash crocodile population would drop. To put this into perspective, let's use the most outlandish example we can. The Sarcosuchus, otherwise nicknamed Sarcos. The Sarcos was able to take down dinosaurs that weighed two to three tons. This was no mean feat. With a close resemblance to the modern-day crocodile and a bite powerful enough to shatter bone, this beast would have made a formidable opponent. 
Yet, if the two were to exist in the same period, the Sarkos would without a doubt have the worst of it, while Titanoboa would flourish. Why is this, you might ask? Well, the Sarkosuchus did not have the best arsenal to appropriately deal with the Titan Serpent. The Titanoboa, however, being literally tons of trained solid muscle, could crush a Sarko that was way bigger than it. Of course, within reasonable size, because extremes would not favor the Titanoboas as they would overeat themselves to death. A surprisingly common phenomenon with alligators today. Now, while the giant croc's jaws are definitely strong, they're not quite sufficient to deal with any irreversible harm to the enormous snake. Don't believe the hype around this particular primeval crocodilian. A basic lesson in biology and anatomy will quickly prove that the Sarcosuchus did not have the mammoth iron-shattering bite force that movies and legends peddle alike. That's just absurd. And you might ask, what about the human population? Well, I've got some news for you. If you happen to live anywhere near the tropical forests that are near the hunting grounds of these giant beasts, you would probably not be alive to even see this. Your forefathers would have been wiped out ages ago. Given the sheer size of these guys, they probably would have to eat several humans to just satisfy them. Also, this is assuming that their numbers would be growing, assuming that the climate favors their reproduction and their survival. So you see, for these guys to even survive now, it would take quite a lot. So you can rest easy, for now. Conditions might change a couple million years from now, but you probably won't be around to see the second rising of the Titanoboa.